We're in the segment where we're continuing dry heat cooking methods and we'll be baking chocolate cake for you today. First thing I want to speak to when it comes to baking specifically mise en place is even more important. Why? Baking is an exact science. If you put too little of one ingredient, too much of another ingredient, your product will always come out different. So it is important you maintain your mise en place and stick to your measurements according to the recipe. For cooking, sometimes we can throw in a little extra this and a little extra that, but with baking, we cannot. So let's speak to measuring. How do we measure? What do we measure? When we're speaking to baking, we're usually dealing with dry ingredients and we're usually dealing with wet ingredients. When it comes to dry ingredients, we tend to measure them via mass, how much they weigh. When it comes to liquid ingredients like your milk or water or juices, we tend to use volume. So if your recipe speaks to kilograms and grams, pounds and ounces, we are speaking to mass, which is weight. What do we use to measure those ingredients? We will use our scales. We have our analog scale and we also have our digital scales. We're moving into an era of technology and becoming digital. With the digital scale, us pastry chefs tend to use these more so than these because their level of accuracy is quite significant. It is only off by probably 0.1 or so. While sometimes you can, you can be a little bit off with your analog because we're using a dial, but once you know how to use your, your, your baking scale, you can still achieve as close to accuracy as possible. How do we use these mass scales to measure our ingredients? So, analog scale. You can see that we have a dial and on the dial it has measurements on this scale you will see these dark colors and it's signified by this sign marked lb and that's lb short for pound so this is measurements for your pounds and ounces 16 ounces makes one pound okay on the inside of your scale is for your kilograms and grams. So if your recipe is asking you for kilograms and grams, you will measure against the red on the inside. Please always remember, do not mix up your measurements when following your recipe. If you start with pounds, you continue to use pounds. And if you start with kilograms and grams, you continue to use kilograms and grams. So how do I weigh my flour? can't wait like this it will just spill off some of these analog scales do come with their own designed um, bowl or what we call a plate but you can by all means substitute with any other vessel and here we're going to use a stainless steel bowl so this comes with a weight because when I put this on you're going to see that my dial moves now I need to make sure that my scale is at zero because if I do not have it at zero I am not going to measure accurately I would include the measurement of my bowl and that means I'm going to be losing out or putting in too much of whatever other ingredients I want to measure so we need to make sure that our pointer is over zero the recipe is a pounds is measured in pounds and ounces and we'll be using the outer measurements which is in the black so how do I get my pointer to the zero all of these scales come with a, a, a dial that will allow you to manipulate the pointer and what you need to do to make sure that you have accuracy in regard to your pointer being over your zero you want to come to eye level and you're going to realize that when I'm measuring you're going to see me coming down to eye level with whatever I'm measuring with because when you look over it can you can misjudge where your dial sits and the same goes when we're measuring in measuring cups come down to eye level so you will see me come down i can see it's a bit off and i'm going to turn 
until we are exactly on zero. Okay, good. So as I said, 16 ounces make one pound. The recipe I'm following today is a chocolate cake recipe and our recipe calls for 12 ounces of flour and four ounces of cocoa. So how do I know what are the pounds or what are the ounces? What are these little small things in between? How do we know? Each of these slots, you can see it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And what's great about this, it represents half, which means it's eight ounces, half of 16, eight ounces. So that's half a pound. So each of these larger slots is one ounce. And what's so great about this scale is that it even gives you the measurement, the indicator for half an ounce. So if your recipe was to call for eight and a, eight and a quarter ounces, you will indeed go to your half and you would include your little notch here. All right. So we will go from zero to a half to one to one and a half to two and going on. All right. So I'm going to measure my flour for you so you can see what I mean. So same way that I come to eye level to, to check to make sure my dial is on zero, I'm going to come to eye level when I'm measuring my flour. So 12 ounces of flour is what we want. So 12 ounces would be 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And there it's already indicated for you on the scale. Quite easy. So let's do this. So I am indeed on zero. I'm just coming to eye level. Make sure my dial is perfect. And we're going to measure. So you can see I'm taking my time. And here I can see, let's look at eye level again. I am just about on that 12, just a notch more so you can see my dial is just slightly over my 12 so i'm just i'm just going to use this spoon we'll come to these spoons just to take off a tip because we need our measurements to be accurate at a level aha 12 ounces and back into your bag that's good flour don't throw it away so here I have 12 ounces of flour measured accurately so I'll move this to the side let's look at the digital scale you have different shapes you have different sizes but digital means that we will have our numbers come up for us so I have my on button, and this is the scale here. Good. So we have it on, as you can see, and our, our digital scale allows you to measure in other units of measurements as well. So you need to make sure that your digital scale is set to the unit of measurement you are using in your recipe. Once again, we're using pounds and ounces. So my scale is already set at pounds and ounces. So if you were to look carefully, you see the LB there, double zero, and you see OZ. OZ is the abbreviation for ounces. So that means in this part here, in this digital area here, that represents the whole of your pound. These other two dots here represent the part of your pound, which would be anything below your 16 ounces. So what I'm going to do, demonstrate how we use the digital scale measuring our cocoa. So we need four ounces of cocoa again. So I have another bowl. The digital scale you can see is flat, so I can't measure just dry ingredients on top of our digital scale. It will just throw away everywhere. So you put your bowl on. Now, just like our analog scale, the bowl has a weight. So if I put this on, you will see that there's a measurement that's going to come on to my digital scale. And it reads 
8.5. That's 8 ounces, 8 and a half ounces. Zero, double dot, 8.5. So my bowl alone weighs 8.5 ounces. So we need to get rid of that. How do we do it? With your digital scales, we use something called TEAR, T-A-R-E, not T-E-A-R. We leave that for other times. It's T-A-R-E, TEAR, meaning to bring our scale to zero. So on my scale, it's simply the on and off button. Some scales have it labeled as TEAR, T-A-R-E. So I'm going to press that once, and you will see it goes to zero. 0, 0.0.0. 0, 0. So now we can weigh. Four ounces. So four ounces, students. Four ounces is less than a pound. So there is no way that this should be reading the number. I am reading only four ounces. So this should read 4.0. Not 4.1, not 4.3, 4. .3, 4 Point zero zero double dot four point zero. So let's do this. Now, students, I have the scale facing away from me only for you to have a better visual. Of course, if it's you measuring it, you will have this facing you. Okay. So, do I have it correct, students? Is it 4.0? Let's take a look. So it says, now you can see that the scale is in between. So we need to make sure it's stable. We need to stabilize that. So we take a look, let it decide, and it has stabilized, and we are at 4.0. Accurate. Accurate. All right. Zero. Double dot, 4.0, four ounces. All right, so that's our cocoa measured. So we have our dry ingredients measured. Let's speak to another tool used, you will see used when measuring the same flowers, cups. Cups is an American measurement. It's, it's a, a mode of measuring, I should say, our dry ingredients. You can indeed use a cup measurement, but if your recipe speaks to cups, you must always stick to using cups. If you have a recipe that reads in pounds and ounces, you need to do your conversions. And that's something that I know that you will do in class, where you would know that X amount of cups equate to X amount of ounces, and you can then convert your recipe according to the unit or the tool of measurement you're using. Cups is a unit and a tool. If it says cups, stick to cups. But if it speaks to flour, sugar, baking powder, cocoa, your dry mass ingredients, you must use the cup accurately. How do we do that? When you are using your cup, to measure dry ingredients, your flour, your sugar, your cocoa, anything dry, there is a specific way you must use your cups to ensure that you are getting accurate measurements. So how do we do that? You can see I have a tray to the base of my cup. I'm measuring one cup. This is a one cup measurement. They come in different sizes, but I'm measuring one cup of flour. In this goes. Now, I want you to see how easy it is that you can be inaccurate if you do not do the correct or follow the correct procedure when it comes to measuring your flour. So my cup looks full. This is incorrect. It looks full, but all of this is space in the cup. So we have to, we have to fill the capacity of the cup to ensure that you have accurate measurements. So look at when I do that. My cup measurement is to the top of this, and there it is, is I'm out of flour. So whatever I am baking, 
will not have the correct amount of flour required. So let's get this right. And you're going to see why you want to have a base. Fill it up. Fill it up. Knock it. Take an instrument. I have my palette knife. Has a straight edge. And we are going to make sure that it's fully, it's full. The capacity is met. And then you are going to scrape the top. Just like that. Accurate. No holes, no air, accurate. So that's one cup of flour accurately measured. And you will do the same no matter what dry ingredient that is with all your cups. You must scrape the top of your cups. Let's speak to the measuring spoon. The measuring spoon, if you look at it, is kind of the same as our measuring cups. We have the set of utensils or pieces of equipment in varying sizes, just like our cups. So how do we use these as well? In your recipes, you will see that these are used for both dry ingredients and wet ingredients. But the, the principle remains the same as you would with your cup measurements. If we're measuring flour in a tablespoon, we need to make sure it's full. You take your palette knife or any other straight edge and completely scrape the top. And there we have an accurate tablespoon of flour. Students, don't ever make the mistake like what I did there. Never measure ingredients over any other ingredients you have already measured or you are about to measure because you are offsetting the accuracy of what you are making. So you see, I scraped my tablespoon over my perfectly measured cup of flour and now I have this extra flour on top of my my cup my cup measurement if this was the flour I had already measured on my scale and I did the same thing I'll be adding extra flour in there so ensure that you are always away from whatever you're uh, measuring and it does not become the, the excess is not included in your measurements so let's make that. Now, what do we do with this excess flour? This excess flour will return to your original source of flour. Ingredients are expensive, they cost money, and we want to make sure that we're not throwing money in the bin. I want to show you the difference in how various mass goods, whether it is in the baking or even cooking, have different um, measurements due to the item that you're weighing so yes I have a cup and yes it says flour one cup but when I come to let's say if I want to measure rice and it says one cup of rice I want to show you how the mass the actual weight of these two items actually differ although we're using this cup measurement so let's prove the theory let's prove the point I should say back to the digital scale we're going to take a bowl onto our digital scale. So remember to use the digital scale. We have to tear, tear the scale. Tear the scale. Zero. Good. Pounds and ounces. So I'm going to prove the point in pounds and ounces. So our cup of flour. How much does this flower weigh? What is the scale reading? The scale is reading. Give it a minute. 4.7 ounces for one cup of flour. So let's see what rice weighs. Same one cup of rice. Remember, all the time, so all this is rice, it's the same technique. Full. Full. Fill it up. Straight edge. So 
So I just shift it. So if there was any pockets, completely flat, one cup into the scale, zero. How much does the rice weigh? 7.4 ounces. Big difference. Now, flour is a lighter ingredient to compare with rice. Each grain of rice is going to be heavier than each bit of flour. So you can see how I've taken a cup. It measures one cup. But because you're dealing with dry ingredients that carry a different mass, a weight, your cup measurement will differ into when you come to weigh your ingredients. So that is why students, you must stick to one unit of measurement when you're reading a recipe. If your recipe says cups, it must be a cup. Because if my recipe actually read eight ounces of flour, and the conversion was, and you, sorry, and the, yes, the conversion spoke to you using um, a quarter cup of flour. And then you went ahead and you used a cup of sugar where you used eight ounces of flour, your recipe will be inaccurate. You have to stick to one user and measurement. Cups for cups, ounces for ounces, grams for grams. I do encourage students to try to make sure that they use their dry ingredients with your scales and if it calls for your cup. If your recipe then calls for liquid ingredients and it speaks to a cup of a liquid ingredient, your milk, water, juice, whatever liquid, you cannot use this. If the recipe says one cup of milk, so the chocolate cake recipe we're using today actually asks for a half cup of milk. You cannot use this. Yes, this reads half cup, but that half cup is for dry ingredients. A half cup of milk in this is not a half cup of milk in our volume utensil this is for volume and a half cup of flour in this is not a half cup of flour in this this is for volume see it's shaped like a cup you know in cups we put drinks this is shaped like that because all we put in this is liquid we measure liquid liquid is measured by volume volume measurements are milliliters and your liters quarts pints that's what we use as unit of measurements when we're measuring volume, liquids, not mass. So I repeat, a half cup of liquid in this is not a half cup of liquid in this. A half cup of dry ingredients in this is not a half cup in this. If you do want to use these cup measurements, for liquid measurements, for volume measurements, you will see that, well, you might not be able to see, but there is quite difficult, but you will see at the bottom of the cup measurement, it has ML, short for milliliters. So if you have a recipe that asks for six milliliters of milk, you can use this, but this half cup speaks to 12.5 milliliters. So you have to use your cups exactly to the measurement that it asks for. So six milliliters, none of these don't speak to six milliliters. I can't use this, they're no use to me. I have to then go to my cup measurement. So let's show you how to use your cup, your volume cup measurements to measure your liquid. We are going to measure the milk. The milk is the ingredient we're using today in our chocolate cake. This is our liquid measurement. And the recipe asks for a half 
cup of milk. So I am using my volume instrument, my cup measurement. On a cup measurement, you can see it speaks to pints. So up to this marker is one pint. You will see that it speaks to cups, two cups at this measurement and it comes down. And then it speaks to ounces. And ounces in terms of fluid ounces. Okay, fluid ounces. So on a digital scale, we can actually measure liquid as well, which is so great about the digital scale. It has a calculation where if you choose fluid ounces, it will measure accurately because it understands that we're using a volume measurement. But always stick to your cup. So I'm, I want to measure a half cup of milk. Half cup. Half, and we need to get to this point. So just as I did with the analog scale, you want to come to eye level with your cup to make sure that we're meeting that measurement. Now students, your cup is also to be on a flat surface. Never have a cup on a surface that's off things that if you were to have a cloth, for an example, that's not ideal. The cloth is not flat, it is rocking, one side is up, one side is down, cannot be accurate. Flat surface. Also, not in your hand, can never be, all right? Flat. So we're moving up, you can see I'm already at that marker, I wanna get to this marker. And what's so great about this here, it actually gives you the equivalent. So a half cup of liquid, fluid of, of our liquid measurement can equate to four fluid ounces at eye level. Do not be tricked by the bubbles. Let those bubbles settle. You want to look for the liquid. And there we are. Accurately measured. Okay? So let's turn this cup, because this cup has on the other unit of measurement for volume, milliliters and liters. 500 milliliters over here. And you will see that my half cup of milk actually is just under, just above, sorry, 100 milliliters. Now it is important that if you had a recipe that asks for 120 milliliters of milk, you're gonna have a bit of a problem as it relates to using this cup measurement because it doesn't give you the smaller increments. It doesn't give you that. It gives you only in 100, half mark here would be 150, 200. So you can average, yes, 125, but it may not be fully accurate. That's why we pastry chefs love the digital scale. The digital scale is not only in our grams, but it also, also offers our fluid ounce measurements. And there we can even meet accuracy um, much better using our digital scale. So we have a half cup of milk. The digital scale does not measure in cups, students, for fluid for um, liquid measurements. It only measures in milliliters, liters, fluid ounces. Okay? So again, if your recipe speaks to cup for your fluid ingredients, milk, water, juices, use the cup measurement.